Hello friends. Welcome to the next lecture of Block Cipher Principles. In the previous lecture, we have seen what is the concept of the block cipher. In the introduction part, we have seen that how the block cipher works. Before that, we have seen that this is considered as the basic principle for working with the blocks. And in this lecture, we have to study about what are the principle of block cipher on which it works and block cipher then becomes the basic cipher or then it becomes the basic principle for rest of the block ciphers for their working functionalities so let's begin with it <music> Block cipher principles. All symmetric block encryption algorithms in current use are based on a structure, and that structure is referred to as a feastal block cipher. Now, we will be seeing what is the feastal block cipher in the next lecture. Before that, we should understand that the encryption algorithm, the block encryption algorithm has its working functionality depending upon the feastal structure in other words we can say that the feastal structure provides working environment or the working principle for all the types of block ciphers for the encryption process it is so important to examine the design principles of the feastal cipher and for that, we should know what is the comparison or what is the difference between a stream cipher and a block cipher. So, a stream cipher is one that encrypts the digital data stream one bit or one byte at a time. That means when particular plain text comes for the encryption process and if that encryption process has to perform the stream cipher type of the algorithm, then every bit of that plain text will be getting converted into the cipher text so there wouldn't there wouldn't be any uh, number of rounds or so but the plain text bits will then be getting converted into the cipher text and the conversion of one bit or only one byte will takes place at one time we have seen the example of this already as the Wigner cipher. A block cipher is one in which a block of plain text is treated as a whole and used to produce a cipher text block of equal length. And typically this size, this block size, we can consider it as the either a 64 bit block size or 128 bit block size this is the typical size of a block when we convert the plain text into small blocks so the block size can be of 64 bit or it can be of 128 bits so when the block comes for the encryption process instead of bit by bit conversion into the cipher text complete block then undergoes the encryption process complete block then undergoes the substitution process we will see what the substitution process is before that most sym symmetric block ciphers are based on a feastal cipher structure it is needed since must be able to decrypt ciphertext to recover the message efficiently because at the end of the feastal cipher structure the output whatever we get that output is needed to be decrypted to get your plain text back so it must be able to decrypt the cipher text to recover your plain text back at the receiver's end block ciphers look like extremely large substitution just now i told you that block ciphers when it comes for the encryption process they need to undergo the substitution process and therefore it is extreme it is considered as extremely large substitution 
block. It would need a table of 264 entries for a 64 bit block. That means if we are having a size of a block of 64 bit, then for conversion of those 64 bit, we would be in need of 264 entries of the letters in a table. That means you can imagine that if the block size is of 128 bits, then how many more entries we would be in need of. And therefore, it was then assumed or it was then uh, finalized that instead of creating these 64 bit block or so, we should have the smaller building blocks. Block cipher principles. Using the idea of the product cipher in 1949, Lord Shannon introduced the idea of substitution permutation networks called modern substitution transposition product cipher. So, uh, depending upon the need of the block ciphers, the in the year of 1949, Claude Shannon introduced idea of substitution permutation network. That means the working functionality of these type of the ciphers will then be dependent upon the substitution and the permutation process and that process that networks then are considered or then are called as the modern substitution transposition product cipher substitution transposition product cipher why because we here we will be performing the substitution and the permutation and therefore it is called as the product cipher the basis of modern block ciphers, we can say that substitution box, S box and the permutation box, P box. These two are the two primitive cryptographic operations which are utilized for conversion of the block into the ciphers. That is conversion of the plain text blocks into the ciphertext blocks. So, we can consider that substitution S box and permutation P box are the two pr primitive cryptographic operations which are then considered as the principles of the block ciphers. And because of the introduction of the substitution that is S box and the permutation P box, they, we, may we may provide or whoever is performing the block cipher encryption can provide the confusion and diffusion of the message now what the confusion and diffusion is diffusion dissipates statistical structure of plain text over bulk of ciphertext which means that if we change the character of the plain text then several characters of the ciphertext should change and similarly, if we change the character, if we change a character of the ciphertext, then several characters of the plain text should change. And this type of changing of the characters of the plain text and the ciphertext we have seen already in the example of the Hill cipher, which we have discussed in the previous module. And now what the confusion is. It makes relationship between the ciphertext and the key as complex as possible so that none of the intruder or none of the attacker can get the idea of what the ciphertext and a key is. So, if we see the difference between the confusion and diffusion, the terms confusion and diffusion are properties for making a secure cipher because we are implementing these principles for securing your data. At the end, our motto is to secure your data to its fullest. And we are using the process or the principles of the substitution and the permutation to perform the encryption to enhance the security. And therefore, the confusion and diffusion are considered as the most important processes or most most important effects which are enhancing the security of a cipher so confusion is used for creating clueless ciphertext while diffusion is used for increasing the redundancy of the plain text over the major part of the ciphertext to make it obscure thank you guys i just hope that you might have got the concept of the block cipher principles and confusion and diffusion. 
so block cipher principles basically works upon the concept of the feastal structure feastal structure also works upon the processes of substitution and the permutation thank you